There was Prince Louis Ferdinand, who said of me that I am a moral midwife who provided one with so gentle and painless a confinement that a tender emotion remained from even the most tormenting ideas. He came accompanied by his mistress, Pauline Weasel, and by his brother-in-law, Prince Radzivill. Ministers and diplomats came, among them Privy State Councillor Stageman, who twenty years later refused to receive me. There was the Swedish ambassador, Brinkman. Peter von Gualtieri, who belonged to court society, had never written anything, and who I counted as one of the four vain men, and thought, nevertheless, thought very well of him. For he was capable of a higher degree of suffering than anyone I knew. I simply could not bear it. Count Tilly, who spoke tremendously well. I am an auditorium for him. He is a kind of stage director of life for me. Besides these, there were my old friends David Veit, a Jewish doctor, and William von Burgsdorf, who spent his time in that aristocratic dilettantism, which has always been the pastime of the nobility, but which now has acquired new value and status as self-cultivation. There were the famous actor Fleck and the actress Unzelmann, whom all the men were in love with, and there was Christel Eigenzatz, Jens's new mistress, and the famous singer Marchetti. There was a Bohemian original, Countess Pachter, who ran away from her husband and was living with some bourgeois. And there was Countess Schlabrendorf, who occasionally wore men's clothes and who had to go to Paris with me because she was expecting an illegitimate child. Far more conventional was the attendance of all the well-known writers and publicists to the period in my room, the humble brothers, although neither like me, Friedrich Schlegel, Clemens von Brantano, Friedrich de la Motte Fauque, Ludwig and Friedrich Tieck, Adelbert von Chamisso, Friedrich von Gens, Friedrich Schleiermacher, the classic philologist Friedrich August Wolff, Jean Paul, who complimented me handsomely and justly. You treat life poetically, and consequently life does the same for you. Master of the world, today I lived life like I never have before. I have never lived so good a life as I have this day. I have been to the far edge of your people Israel, the place where the boundary of Israel ceases. Until now, I dwelt alone outside the camp. Now I begin. I used to think it was my evil urge that said to me, no one can lead the young people as well as you. But now I know clearly that I really am the single leader of this generation in the world. Now I know at last that there is no other leader like me. More pacing and clapping, building up to a peak moment of ecstatic joy as the text goes on. Here he picks up the Torah scroll. The world has not yet tasted of me at all. If they were to hear but a single one of my teachings with the melody and dance that belong to it, they would simply pass out. Their souls would just leave them in a great and wondrous joy. Even the animals and blades of grass would be affected. Everything in the world would simply pass out of itself. Holding the Torah scroll, he hums Odishama, beginning slowly. Zorba like, he builds to a full blown Freilach dance. I want to give my people a wondrous sense of awe, an awe that has never yet existed in this world. But even the awesome miracles you perform for us, nowadays they are interpreted by them as though they are natural events. Genesis, monkeys. Exodus, a sandbar. Sinai, a windstorm. Oy! I tell you, these new intellectuals are like wild beasts, trampling and tearing up your people. Your people run after them and end up thinking just like they do, that everything is by natural causes. A wicked tongue is worse than an evil hand. An animal has a long tongue, yet he can't recite a blessing. The defeat of these monstrous creatures can be brought about only by a great tzaddik. Only he is capable of binding all their desires to a root in the divine will, like Moses did in the hour of his death. 
And where, where is your great sage of holiness now? Reb Mordechai Daniel of Shulzrina. Ha, ha. The false leaders of today are lying hypocrites who imitate the truth, Sadiq, like apes. The devil himself finds it too difficult to lead the whole world astray, so he appoints one leader in one place and another someplace else. These celebrities sit all day wrapped in talus and tevilin like czars in their courts, and the people follow them into sin. The souls of Israel descend into the husks of the unclean world. Then must your beloved daughter, the Shekhinah, your lost princess, also fall away from you into exile, so that she may struggle to gather up the lost souls of Israel. Dear Lord, how you must grieve for your lost princess and how she longs to return to you. What about me? What about your servant Menachem? Rabboi Nishal Oilam, I hear your call. I see how you suffer and your longing for your wandering people and your princess who tries so hard to bring them back to you. I feel in my heart how much your people, Israel, long to return to you. Nachamu, amin, nachamu, nachamu, yomor Elohechem, dabru elei Yerushalayim, vekilu eleha kimala tziva. Ya 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 Zion, 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 be mishpati pade, v'shaveha, v'shaveha b'tzedaka. Ya 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 nachamu, amin nachamu. Nachamu yom Elohechem kir na'itzav avonecha ki lakecha miyad Hashem kiflaim bechol chatoha bechol chatoha bechol chatoha.